Delphine Software, in conjunction with U.S. Gold, proudly presents. They were on the run from laser beams. Actually, it was just one guy, it seemed. Nope, no, nope, oh, there was two or three, actually. Hopping on a motorcycle was their last resort. But they knew they could make it. Oh, the other guys are bad guys, actually. The first one was the only one who was good. On a hyperspace flying motorcycle, he's escaping the law, but the law catches up with him. So he has to fly into a jungle to escape justice. But justice has a long attention span. Also really, really, really long load times. It's taken forever just to get this far. Well, in case you can't guess, this is flashback. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're going to be playing reportedly the best selling French game of all time, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. This, of course, is the sci fi action adventure classic known as Flashback on the Amiga. Uh, this game takes place in the deep, dark, distant future of 2142. It is a 2D platformer with rotoscoping in the style of uh, Prince of Persia or Netherworld or Out of This World. So if you go back and watch my old videos on those games, uh, you'll see lots of similarities with this one. This is more like an adventure and puzzle solving game than it is a platformer per se. Um, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started because this being an Amiga game, I know I'm gonna be sitting here for like five minutes while it loads. And we are waking up in a jungle with a butterfly on us. And there's a blinking little box that we have knocked aside. So as you can see, immediately this game should remind you of um, Out of This World. We got the rotoscoped animation, similar to Prince of Persia. And this is going to be a bit of a puzzle game for us. Now I wonder, can we... Whoa! <laughs> it's going to say jump there. Um, I think up is the jump. Yeah, and he's stumbling into the darkness. Press F1 to continue. We're definitely going to give that one another shot. So you hold a button to run, I think. Yeah, so one button runs. And then we can sort of do uh, a long jump from this. Whee! Boom! Oh, jumped into the wall. Man, this guy's just going to be ping-ponging all over the jungle. If, uh, if I have anything to say about it, apparently. Oh, and he just fell, hopefully not to his death. Oh, that is the thing that we need to get. Have I messed up already? Can I still get it? hey oh yes I can. All right. We did it together, guys. We have the holocube. You picked up the holocube. Now, what do we do with the holocube? All right, I have figured out that this guy is armed. He's got a gun. Seems to have infinite ammo, but that's pretty cool. You can bring that in and out with the space bar. Still trying to figure out how to use this little holocube thing that I've got here. Um, I can make him sort of turn to the side. I think that is a use uh, button. We do have uh, options here. Shield, credits, holocube. There we go. Let's look at the old holocube. So now that we have this... I think we've activated the holocube. I think we're about to get a cutscene. Yes, we are. There we go. I knew I had it within me to figure it out. Holding up the holocube, he presses the button and it glimmers to life. A static image of a shadowy figure. Replaying, he notices, hey, it's me. I don't remember making such a holocube, he thinks. Hi, Conrad. You must be wondering why you recorded this message without remembering it. Whoa, it's like total recall, guys. Get your ass to Mars. Um, I am wondering why I would record a message for myself. Or maybe it's just like, you know, hey man, don't forget to like pick up the laundry on your way home. Good question, but it would be, take too long to explain and time is short. And if you want to save your hide, dot dot dot. I always hate when characters in movies and stuff say it's, it's, it would take too long to explain. Come with me. Then later on when they explain it, it's not actually that hard to explain at all. You must contact your old friend in New Ian in New Washington. Okay and get let's go he'll explain it all to you there good luck watch your back because it's my life you're playing with two the two isn't there i added it because i felt the sentence needed it okay um well alrighty then i guess 
Let's go back to our inventory here. Let's go ahead and select... We have zero credits. Just an empty credit card, I guess. Go ahead and select our shields, I suppose. Um, do we got it? Yes, there we go. Um, we Oh, he totally can grab that. Okay. So now, how do we get out of here, I wonder? Can we just walk... Oh, I'm, I'm hidden. You guys can't see me, can you? I was here all along. I think maybe we can jump back up. That's what my strategy is going to be. Hey, oh, he's just doing a bit of cardio. There we go. And we'll go like this. We'll go like up. <laughs> How am I trapped here? There's, There's got to be a way out. We'll run our way out. <laughs> that didn't work. Okay, there's only one other way we could get out. And that involves having to uh, climb out this way, I think. Like this. Like this. There we go. Alrighty. So, what do you guys think? Let's try running to the... Damn it. Didn't let me jump. So the one thing that I ne I didn't like about Prince of Persia's controls either, or Out of This World, is that the rotoscoping is cool here. I mean, definitely look at this game. This looks pretty damn impressive. But there's such a delayed... Um, reaction when you press a button that it can be sort of difficult to son of a I was pressing up there damn it oh come on I jumped that too uh, you see like I'm missing jumps and stuff I guess I just got to get the timing down right I'm sure maybe once I get the timing of things down and like oh come on you knew what I wanted to do there don't be difficult okay so forget trying to forget trying to go across that little gap there it's clearly it doesn't want me to go that way I don't know what's going on. Whoa! <laughs> I initiated a jump on the previous screen. It took that long before it started. Oh, what is this thing? Oh, oh god! It's it's killing me. It's zapping me. Run, run for your life. Okay, I guess this is where where we came before. All right, I I know what's what's not good for robots. It's bullets. Oh shoot! This thing followed me. Run, dude. Run. Get your gun out. Kill this thing! Oh, it's dodging! Oh, we, we killed it. We blowed it up, yes. That's cool how when he's got his gun out, he can, like, roll. He's like, Wah! Wah! The captain's roll from uh, Star Trek or Galaxy Quest. All right, let's go ahead and put the gun away because we don't need it anymore. I see a blinking green thing over to my right. I'm going to try and make my way there. And nope. Cannot grab that thing. So we got to do, like, a running jump. Oh, shoot. One of these things, eh? And it's it's just low enough that I can't hit it. And my guy's like so perplexed by the idea of further lowering his gun. He's like, "What would that do? I don't I don't quite get it. What are we trying to accomplish here?" All right, running start. Get ready to get your gun out. Hit! Ah, damn it! With the delayed controls. Okay, do I have to like press jump on the previous screen? So I can already say that although the the graphics are cool. Oh, come on, I was holding up there. I am really, I'm really sort of finding these controls very challenging. Um, they're just not intuitive. Like, you press a button, and it, it can sometimes take a full second or two before he does it. It's really hard to describe without playing it. But, okay, I'm now holding up. And he didn't jump. He didn't jump. Now he jumps. Um, very, very significantly delayed. Oh, now he jumps into the wall like an idiot. Oh my god, I like. I was looking forward to this game. I wanna, I wanna like explore it and see more of the game. But like, if I can't figure these controls out, it's gonna be a very rapid end of our little playthrough here. Oh my god, you could have just stood there and made the jump the whole time. Oh, of course. All right. So when you hold the like action button, if you're standing in place, you do a long jump. Okay. Well, you know what? That's good to know. That's good to know. I was getting a little frustrated with the running jump, how it was not working. But I guess we don't need running jumps in this game. We just need to stand in one spot and hold action. Okay, so you know what? I'm glad I figured it out. It's... Oh! You climb up there. And then you run. <laughs> run for your life away from that weird thing. Okay, get your gun out. Because we don't run from trouble. We kill trouble. Dead you are. Oh, God. I fell off the side. <laughs> okay. Let's kill this guy, too. I think we're both shooting past each other. 
This is the most awkward encounter ever. The first one to blink loses. All right, I'll blink. Oh, I blinked into a wall. Roll and kill. My God, that was funny. We we're both standing side by side, both shooting past each other. Okay, put the gun away. Now what can we do here? This looks like an elevator of some kind. Oh, geez. I guess we'll just jump right off it though. That what, what can that hurt, eh? We'll go ahead and jump again. Oh God, I jumped way too far. Oh, and I killed myself. All right, well, we're learning. We're learning, guys. So uh, this is a uh, French game. As I said in the intro, it is reportedly one of the best-selling French games of all time. We don't need the Hollow Cube again because we already know what our mission is. Or do we need it? Maybe let's just go get it to be safe. Why not? We, we, we. Um, anyway, so this is a French game. Oh, how do I pick it up again? Action. There we go. Cool. Um, it got me kind of thinking, like, about nationalities of games. Because, honestly, like, these days, most video games are kind of, like, Japanese or American. Um, I know there are also European games, and some games are made in good old Canada, too. But it kind of feels like the two styles. Like, there's sort of Japanese-style games, which have a bit of a Japanese flair to them. And then there's kind of Western-style games, which encompasses, like, North America, Canada, mostly Europe. I guess Europe does it a little bit more with, like, soccer and sports than uh, some of the other regions. But, like, back in the day of, like, the ZX Spectrum and stuff, um, like, the ZX Spectrum produced decidedly British feeling games. Oh my god, this thing is gonna kill me. No, oh, it's zapping me. Put your stupid gun away. Oh, the controls, they're so delayed. No, put your gun away. No, run. Now run, you idiot. <laughs> god damn it. Okay, we escaped it. Jesus, okay. I already know that, you know, despite everything positive we're gonna say about these, this game, the controls are delayed as hell and I hate it. I hate it, guys. I know you can say, well, you gotta get used to it and once you get used to it, it's good. But, like, to hell with that. I do not like these controls. They're way too delayed. Um, it's just, it's hard to play the game when you press a button and you don't know when your character's going to do it. Like, that little robot there, I know what I want to do. I want to turn around, shoot him, and kill him. And by the time I get my gun out, I'm, like, almost dead. Um, not a fan. Not a fan of what's happening here with the delayed controls. And I just rolled off the ledge. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Anyway... Um, the ZX Spectrum produced decidedly British feeling games, which is kind of was kind of cool, you know, to play those old games. I feel like these days, um, those types of games don't seem to exist anymore. Like if you go back and look at any of my playthroughs of old British games on the ZX Spectrum, they really do seem qualitatively different than either Japanese or North American. But you know, it, I kind of don't feel like I get that sense from video games anymore. There's kind of Western, there's kind of Japanese. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's the, the same, you know, if, if my feelings of the... Oh my god, jump across the ledge, you stupid idiot! I don't know if my feelings of the game industry and my frustration with this game are what you guys feel. But yeah, I don't know. Do you guys feel like it's sort of... There's Japanese and Western and then other types of games, it's a little different? Or do you... Cartridge Zero, okay. So why even bother? Um, do you feel like there is still a big distinction between kind of like European and American and maybe even British and maybe there are French games you can think of, etc. To hell with that little robot. We're just bold and getting the hell out of here, man. All right. So I know how to do this. Oh, God damn it. Are you kidding me? Okay, hold on. When I'm holding run... I don't even, oh my god, I thought I had to press forward and jump, because it just made sense to me, but no, if you're holding action, you just press jump, so every time I meant to just jump, I was sometimes taking a step forward and falling to my doom. The things you learn, um, I'm still not over my little uh, annoyance with the controls, and you know, forgive me, if you love flashback, I'm sorry. Um, as someone who's never played flashback before, my god, there's a learning curve here, and it's it's not super forgiving in terms of the controls. Uh, one of the most frustrating things I find in, in any video game is when you can't control things very well. Um, and it's true that for any control scheme, you could learn it. But honestly, like the hallmark of a well-designed game is where you don't have to try to, to overcome difficult controls, where the game just sort of naturally controls quite well. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
You can disagree with me if you want, and that's totally fine. But I'm just telling you, like, my opinion of what makes a fun game, and I do not like wrestling with controls. And I'm kind of disappointed that this game makes you do that, because I, I want to enjoy this game. And, like, there's a lot... Of, I mean, the gun the gunplay is kind of cool. The atmosphere is cool. I love the futuristic sci-fi setting of all this stuff. It's pretty cool. So, we'll see. Oh, no, I wanted to jump forward. You bastard. And now he's going to kill me. Get out of here. All right. Let's kill these two things. Kill the robot. There we go. All right, we're making progress. Let's see how far we can get without dying. That's like my only mission in this game. I know there are puzzles and stuff we'll have to solve eventually, but we're gonna leave that for another day. That guy's guarding that uh, very important little uh, cartridge lock. What is this? I need a fully charged magnetic cartridge. Interesting. Uh. I mean, it's a cool world. I don't know what the story is entirely, except that he was running from the law and, uh, oh, he took a bullet to the gut. I hope that was a rubber bullet. Boom. Yeah, like it's, okay, I saw that guy there. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to shoot him in the face. So I jumped down, pull out my gun. By the time all the animations are done, I'm taking a hit. So I guess I should have taken my gun out first. But like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess maybe, maybe I'm just a child of modern games where they're way more forgiving um, for these types of things. And I can't jump with my gun. So we're going to have to jump and hope we get it out before he decides to shoot us. Oh, we can't even climb there. Okay, let's see what this green thing is. It may kill us. It may be a power-up. 50-50 shot. Let's find out. Um, it is powering him up with the energies of the Amazon. Oh, it, it killed him. It killed him. I guess I wasn't ready for that much power. Okay, back at the back at the start here. So I tried to think of, like, what other French games there were. Speaking of, like, you know, different nationalities of games like British and American and Japanese and so on. And the only French game I could specifically think of was Cruise for a Corpse, that adventure game we played uh, way back when. And that one actually felt also decidedly French. Like, it, it was about guys with mustachioed and, like, an inspector, and he was solving crimes on a cruise ship. Just feels very French. Um, this game, I guess it feels a little French, but I can't tell if that's because I know it's French or because it legitimately is a little French. At least we're getting better at this stuff. Oh, we still took a bullet, though. Just go down already. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I would call this a French game, if it, if it feels French or not. But I guess knowing it's French, it, it feels okay that it is French. But, yeah, I couldn't think of too many other French games. It is interesting that this game is literally in the Guinness Book of World Records, though. It's, like, the best-selling French game of all time. <laughs> Which is kind of cool, but also, like... Um, you know, I didn't know that they kept... Oh, are you kidding me? I didn't know they kept records of different nationalities of games. You know, like, what's the best-selling Dutch game of all time? I don't know. Um, would be cool, though, to end up in the Guinness Book of World Records. I mean, I mean, kudos to the developers. Good for them, you know. Like, it's a pretty aw awesome achievement. I wonder if we could get to this ledge here. This is just asking for trouble. No, you can't. Um, I've always thought it would be cool to end up in the Guinness Book of World Records for something. I don't, don't think anything in my lifetime will ever actually count. So I don't think I've done anything that remarkable. I mean, you know, in, in my wildest fantasies, I have thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool if the 1001 Games thing one day got me into, like, a world record. Oh, my God, what killed me? What killed me there? Seriously? What does Code Fire even mean? Why do they keep telling me that when I awaken? There we go. Anyway, my wildest dreams, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to end up in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe the let's play 1001 games thing will someday, you know, get me in there. Oh, my God. Not at this pace, though, right, guys? Um, oh, my God. No, jump forward, you goddamn idiot. Jump forward. Forward. Oh, thank you. Jeez. Um, jeez. I'm getting so distracted here. By the terrible delayed controls. <laughs> uh, th this game just wasn't meant for me, guys. This was not meant for me. Oh, I just fell to my death after I got all the way back. Are you kidding me? Wake up in the jungle. Die. Repeat. Okay, screw the goddamn holodeck. I'm not getting it. 
getting too fed up and getting so frustrated I'm not even taking my time, and that's when you make more mistakes in games. Oh my god. You know the feeling where like you're just getting so fed up with the game that you stop trying and you start trying to rush through it and then you make even more mistakes? And it's just counterproductive. So I have a feeling we're not getting past this stupid jungle. <laughs> I can't even get past like four screens without dying. And they're not that complicated, the screens. It's just like, for the love of God. Okay, let's roll past this guy. Y you know what, buddy? Oh, he's doing a little dance. He's doing a little dance here. I want to. I want to see him dance. Come on, man, dance. Do a little. Do a little dance. Ah, oh, you were dancing. You know, fun. What is happening with the door? Oh, God. <laughs> go away! What is happening with the damn door? I've never. This has not happened to us before. What is happening here? Oh my god, do I have to go back for that stupid holodeck? I've decided it's easier to let this thing kill me than to go back for the holodeck. Because, uh, patience levels are running thin. Anyway, yeah, uh, you know, uh, it'd be kind of cool if one day the 1001 games thing got me in the Guinness Book World Records. I have, uh, you know, I'm not, it's not like a goal or I'm not holding out hope for it or anything like that. Because the reality is, like, I'm not playing these games to completion. I feel like if I was finishing 1001 games, maybe I'd have a shot. But, you know, I mean, I I just don't have the time for that. I mean, think of how long it's going to take me to actually just try 1001 games, let alone beat them. So, um, I don't know. It's like a fun idea to fantasize about, but uh, I don't think it will ever actually come to pass. But, hey, who knows? Ne never say never. Um, if this game could end up in the Guinness World Records as the best-selling French game, maybe I've got a shot, too. But a little bit of funny trivia for you. Uh, Guinness is a beer company. Uh, it's kind of weird when you think about it. Why are they holding on to all the records of the world? And the answer, which is kind of interesting, the reason that uh, it's Guinness, who has the Guinness Book of World Records, is it started from uh, debates, bar debates, where people... Oh, he shot me off the cliff, you dick! Oh, well, I'll take it at this point. At this point, that's a good outcome for me. So, walk over here, jump, turn around, duck, draw my gun. Oh, you bastard. I just can't avoid getting hit by those guys. Anyway, bar debates is why Guinness got into the Guinness Book of World Records. Uh, people would get in debates at bars, bars saying, like, which, which bird can fly the farthest and uh, which country has drank the most beer and this and that. And so people get in these arguments in bars, and Guinness, a beer company, as a promotional thing, decided to start keeping track of some of these random things. This is obviously way before the internet, because nowadays you can just look it up. So Guinness Book of World Records would not have been created today. Oh my god, I was holding the button to jump goddamn forward instead of up. Oh, I hate the controls in this game! <laughs> and, uh, yeah... I'm basically I'm, I'm tapping out here soon guys so I'm just gonna finish musing about Guinness um, it is kind of interesting how things evolve like that like Michelin you know the company that gives out Michelin stars which which if you've ever watched like Gordon Ramsay or something like that uh, every restaurant tours always always cares about Michelin stars Michelin is a tire company the only reason that they do anything with restaurants is they used to produce travel guides to tell their that they would give you with tires or something I guess um, to try to, like, uh, tell people where good places to eat were, and I guess all of a sudden, eventually, they kind of got really respected. So you got a beer company taking care of world records, you got a tire company taking care of good restaurants, and you got me getting gunned down in the Amazonian forest because I cannot get past these bad controls. Ugh, ugh. Okay, I tell you what, I am nothing if not a little determined here. I am, I am not a quitter. I'm going to try one more time. All I want to do is get past that screen that has the green glowing stuff. Um, because I just want to know what the next few screens are. We're not going to get far in this game here, guys. This has really just been a peek at flashback. It's been a flashback to flashback. It's kind of like when you were a kid reading video game magazines. You'd sift... Oh, my God. Uh, maybe I'm just, maybe, maybe it's me, guys. Maybe I'm really, really, really bad at these controls. And I, I'm willing to accept that. I'm willing, you know, I'm not a good gamer at every game. I Maybe I'm just shit at this game. I just suck. So forgive me. I'm sorry I put you guys through this. Please believe me. It's no fun for me either. 
But uh, really, this is kind of like when you were a kid, when you were digging through like uh, video game magazines looking for cool looking games, and you just see, have screenshots. You wouldn't have too much else to go on. You wouldn't know like what the later levels are like, or what the gameplay was like. You're really just sort of examining the game. Oh God, taking a peek at it. That's kind of what we're doing now. I do remember as a kid sifting through magazines and stuff, and I would see games like this, and I would think they just look totally awesome. Ugh, cannot avoid that bullet. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but it's just a mystery that I'll never solve. We'll leave his data cube over there. You know what this game actually does kind of remind me of is Space Quest 2. Because in Space Quest 2, I actually played that game through. It's a really fun game. Uh, very challenging as well, but challenging in a different way because it's all Sierra puzzle games. But uh, in Space Quest 2, you're also like an adventurer, just kind of lost on a space jungle, and there's like random bad guys trying to shoot at you. So we're... Okay, we're on the next screen. This is the one screen that we have to get by. Uh, my finger is off of the stupid run button, so we can skip this part. Okay, we are over it. We are past this. Oh my god, we're about to see one more screen of the game. Are you ready, guys? Are you ready? Oh yeah, we saw this one already. Crap. What happens? This thing comes down, and we have to get on it. ASAP or we die. Okay, we did it. What is this? An energy generator. No, we needed that stupid cube. Oh my god. Is it too late to go back and get the cube? Because I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for you guys. We're going to sneak our way over there. I'll sly like with our gun drawn. Guns cocked and ready for action. And kill this guy. Boom, 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 boom. Nice try, buddy. Nobody gets the drop on Jay. The jungle has been a crow. Oh, my God. There's another thing over here, too. Um, I got a feeling we got to go back for that little energy thing. So we're going to do that. Oh, no. We got to go back the way we came. Uh, the controls are so slow. It's almost easier just to, like, restart the game because we're so near the beginning. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me! I, I think there's some kind of weird electrical energy running through this forest. I don't know what's going on with your electrical bills, but I think you got a leak here somewhere, guys. Somebody may want to check in on that. All right, well, at least we've made some progress. I know we haven't made it too far, guys, but by the time we quit this game, we'll at least be able to say we did a couple things. Went into a forest, found a uh, hollow cube, found an energy thing, plugged it into a thing to get the things to happen, had some energy, do a thing, and then eventually we kind of died in uh, some gutter in the jungle. But uh, at least we did a few things. That's what it'll say on my tombstone. Gaming J, he did a few things. <laughs> Actually, that'd be an awesome tombstone. Nobody take that idea. It's mine. Gaming J, he did a few things. All right. Now let's uh, let's go find out what happens when you stick a cube in a thing. I suspect it will go zip 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 zip, and uh, then it will be energized. Maybe we'll come back and use it on the bridge and see what happens. Maybe we won't. I guess it's a big old mystery. You'll have to. Oh, don't kill us! Don't kill us! Whew! You'll have to wait and see. Energy generator. Um, do we need to bring up our cube? Have our cube selected. Yes. F1. There we go. Use the cube. Use the cube. The cartridge is recharged. We did it! We did a thing! Alright. I am going back to where I know the cartridge needs to be plugged in. We're going to try plugging it in and see what happens. Hopefully we'll get a cool little animation of a bridge extending. And, uh... That's going to make my day at this point. You know, I will say, as much as the controls I find very difficult to use, and it's sort of made my gameplay of this game a little negative, I will say I'm getting a little more used to them. So, you know, I'm not saying that necessarily this is a bad game or you shouldn't play it, but I do kind of feel like if you've never played this game before and you don't have the patience... Um, perhaps to pick up some rather delayed and sometimes awkward controls. Oh, wait. Where was that bridge? Oh, it was down here. Gotcha. You may be better served just watching someone play. Because first, because let me say, the graphics in this game look freaking amazing. The rotoscoping does look cool. Um, it just, you know, I personally don't enjoy the rotoscoping because it screws up my gameplay. But, the, but it does look cool. 
I need a fully charged magnetic cartridge. Oh, I thought my magnetic box would work on that. Oh, well, let's just go see what was further down the line um, of that path that we abandoned. Oh, don't walk into the green stuff, though. They'll get you. All right. So, yeah, if I saw a screenshot of this in a magazine as a kid, this game would have looked awesome to me. And I definitely would have uh, wanted to, to play it. Um, you know, one game I will always remember from video game magazines that was looking really cool and I never got to play it was Chuck Rock. It just always looked so neat. He was like this slovenly caveman dude and he was all pixelated and he looked awesome. Never to this day haven't played Chuck Rock. I will. You know what? I'll play it at some point uh, for my little channel here, but I've never played it. Um, and I've just always been curious. Um, Chuck Rock. I mean, just the name sounds pretty cool. Um, how do I get up here? Do I... Uh-oh. Can we... Can we do something here? Is there something that you want from me? Blinking ground stuff? How about... Uh, credits. Let's bribe it with an empty credit card. Um, I don't know. Does the holocube please you? Maybe? Or are we just gonna watch that stupid cutscene again? Well, I think we've kind of reached the end of uh, Flashback here. In fact, I'm pretty sure this is the last level. There is no more gameplay to see. If you don't believe me, you can Google it, but I'm sure I'll end up being right. Guys, Flashback here, as I said, looks like an awesome game. Has awesome rotoscoping, cool retro vibes to it. It is a very challenging game in terms of the controls. Uh, it was so challenging, in fact, that it kind of like got the better of me. Um, is this a game that you must play before you die? I think it's going to fall more into the category of like, this would be an awesome game to watch. So you may want to look up a long play for this and watch someone who's good at this game, who knows what they're doing, go through some of the later levels and so on. Because again, it looks totally awesome. Um, I think in terms of the controls, it may, the delayed controls and the sort of somewhat confusing or difficult controls, um, or maybe not even confusing or difficult, they just take some getting used to. I think that may put off some more casual or novel players. So, you know, be aware of that going in. But if you do want to try it, it seems like a solid Amiga game. Um, and again, it is the best selling French game of all time. So uh, that's saying something. Guys, what do you think about Flashback here? Do you have any favorite memories of it? Have you ever tried it before? What do you think? Was it difficult for you to learn? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whether you've enjoyed the game or not, hopefully you've enjoyed checking it out with me. Um, if you have, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game, and hopefully one that I can figure out how to play a little better. So until next time, my friends, take care of yourselves. Don't get lost in any futuristic jungles. And peace. Oh my god, these elevators can move? Wait, 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 can we move this one? Hold on, let me just get back over here. Are you kidding me? Hold on, walk over. No, okay. I was gonna say, it can move the whole time, but it can't. I, you know, without looking up a walkthrough, I still don't know what I'm missing right here. But look, oh, boo, <laughs> run into the tree. Okay, but look, look, you just stand here, hold the action button, and up and down moves you. Hmm. The things you learn by accident in this world still doesn't help us, but it's uh, nice to know. I figured it out by trying to jump off this ledge. And uh, if you stand here too long, I'm pretty sure you just die. Yep. Forrest got me.